Good morning from Arizona. One of my subscribers asked if I could put together a video that showed all of the preparation and equipment uh, that I use uh, for backcountry travel. Uh, we commonly go into the backcountry and maybe 40 or more miles away from our campsite and that sometimes that is at very high elevations. So we carry a lot of equipment that you may consider to not be essential. Nonetheless, here we go. In my mind, uh, one of the things that's critical uh, for long-term uh, use is a winch. Uh, this is a factory installed 4,000 pound winch that came with the uh, XRC. It can be used to pull yourself out of the mud. You can also run the cable underneath and pull it backwards. If you have tree straps and, and some of the other equipment that I have, uh, you can use it to pull the front end up to change a tire. You can upright another vehicle with it or maybe your own vehicle. You can pull things sideways. You can redirect things. You can pull trees out of the path of uh, the road and that sort of thing. So a winch is uh, very useful and a very necessary item from a survival standpoint. I'd also like to point out auxiliary lighting. Uh, the lights on these units is not the best. It's not bad, but it's not the best. And uh, auxiliary lighting, if you're going to ride at night, uh, can aid in your survival. On the top of the rig, uh, we have a uh, little folding shovel that can be handy uh, in a survival situation. Inside this bag, I probably won't unpack it, there's a backpack uh, that I can use to carry equipment if we ever do have to walk. You're going to want something to uh, carry camera gear, water bottles, food, whatever it is that you might want to carry on a trip. And uh, so inside that backpack then is our rain gear, uh, which we always take with us. Okay. Another absolutely invaluable item to have on any long trip uh, is a spare tire. And uh, uh, I've never had a flat on this vehicle. I hope I never do. And I consider hauling this spare tire uh, to be worth every, every bit of effort that it takes. I also throw a coat on the rig for every trip and the coat would be appropriate with the anticipated worst case scenario weather events. So if it's uh, 40 degrees out, I'll take winter gear knowing that it could end up being 20 degrees out. Uh, during the summertime when it's 70 degrees out, I'll carry a lighter jacket uh, that would see me through the worst possible conditions. Uh, in this bag, there are two camp chairs, uh, which are comfortable. Uh, they fold up nicely. And that gives us a comfortable place, comfortable place to sit while we're eating. Uh, I also carry uh, this guy. That is a steering wheel lock. It wraps around the brake pedal and around your steering wheel. And it would discourage uh, easy stealing of your rig. There are times when we drive into town, like maybe uh, Silverton or someplace like that for lunch, and we'll have lunch and we have to leave the rig a block or two from where we're going to eat. And so I like to discourage anybody from just getting in it and driving it off. Up in this bag, uh, there is a set of field glasses. And these are high quality Swarovski uh, field glasses. Those are useful for spotting things at distance, for animal watching, that sort of thing. Uh, we also try to take maps of the locations that we're driving to. Uh, those may be uh, paper maps. These are lim laminated maps for kind of local area, places that we commonly go to. We also have uh, a Vinza mapping system, which I've done a video on and you'll find on my site, so that we have electronic maps variety of flashlights, headgear, and uh, spare 
tools there. Underneath the seat is one of the changes that you can make to your rig uh, that will definitely aid you in remote travels. That's a much larger battery. You should uh, be able to find a video on my site uh, on how to upgrade your battery. You're going to see the OE battery in just a little bit uh, and a continuing use for it. And then uh, this is a little box that's just got, it's my junk box. It's got spare parts, nuts and bolts, and uh, things that I might need out on the road. In our side bags, we typically carry spare hats, spare gloves, things of that nature. Sometimes it's necessary to clear the trail, and you could potentially have other uses for this device. So I think a good machete is a, can be a handy device for a variety of Underneath reasons. The passenger seat is my tool selection. And uh, this is the factory original equipment tool. You should uh, find information on that on my site as well. That's important to make sure that that system is complete so far as having the tools, both tools that you need uh, to change the belt on this unit. And then I use these little uh, inexpensive pencil bags from the uh, drugstore and all of my hand tools are in there. I have a fairly complete uh, selection of sockets and wrenches and uh, other things that I might need uh, for on the road repair. In the glove box, a few extra tools, some goggles, certainly all of the paperwork with the license and registration information, uh, the current off-road stickers, and uh, one of the things that's in there is a remote uh, winch connection uh, and controller. So we can plug that controller in here, and it's got a big long cable on it uh, that you can pull out uh, and use from outside the rig. Now the rig also has a dash switch uh, to control the winch. And uh, if you're sitting in the driver's seat, you can use this winch control uh, to run the winch in and out. You're going to want to put uh, some kind of a connection on the receiver hitch. We just use a standard ball connection. Uh, that allows you to uh, hook a tow rope loop or something like that, a tree strap around that ball. I know on full-size vehicles they say don't uh, pull sideways on a ball like that, but I think for these uh, lighter weight, smaller vehicles, you're just fine doing that. But you want something to facilitate uh, making a tow connection on the back end. Okay, so let's look at some of the stuff that's inside uh, the rig when we're uh, headed out. First off, a cooler, some kind of a cooler for water and lunch and that sort of thing. This little Yeti box works uh, works really well for us. I carry a fire extinguisher. I need to find a good mount for that and a first aid kit. Hopefully everybody's got one of these. That's a spare belt. Uh, this is the original equipment belt. I broke it in and then uh, bought a spare and took the original equipment belt off after it was broken in and put my spare on and broke it in as well. So this belt is always in the in the uh, rig and it's ready to go. I can put it on and just take off and go. I have uh, two air compressors. This is a little small uh, 12 volt leftover from my motorcycle days. And then I also have uh, a larger and better uh, VI air compressor and a good digital pressure gauge uh, to go with it for monitoring my tires. This is uh, 
tire plugs and tire patching equipment in a bag along with little tools necessary. I don't like plugs, but if I have to use one out on the road uh, to keep me going, I'll use them. This is a set of jumper cables that I made up, and uh, they don't need to be real large for these rigs. Uh, I think this cable was good for 8 amps or 10 amps or something like that. At any rate, it's it works uh, works just fine, and there's, a, uh, I think, 15 or 20 feet of wire there with some uh, alligator clips. So that's my jumper cables. All right, why would I need jumper cables? Well, if I'm by myself... Um, I took my OE battery and replaced it, and uh, I found a nice little ammo box uh, from uh, on Amazon that my battery will fit into. I put this in my uh, fifth wheel and keep it on a charger, on a trickle charger, and if we're going by ourselves and we're going to be some distance uh, from camp, I will throw this in my toolbox as well. So that gives me a spare battery. For some reason, uh, my uh, battery on the unit fails or lets me down. I've got jumper cables and spare battery if I need it. This is a uh, small bottle jack. The box is pretty beat up. Uh, I've never had to use that, but I've got it if I need it. It's a little two-ton bottle jack. Then I carry a variety of wood blocks, little wood blocks that I can use to block the tires up or uh, jack the rig up, whatever is necessary. And then I have a uh, multi-purpose, multi-sized uh, lug nut wrench uh, that will that I can use to uh, take the lug nuts loose. On the it's been a while since I had everything out of the box here. This is my winch bag. This has some pretty cool stuff in it. Uh, first off, tree straps. Uh, those are really important if you're going around something that you don't want to damage. That might be a tree. You run, run this around a tree or a tree limb. But it might also be something like your buddy's side by side when he's rolled over and you're trying to upright him again. So, these are inexpensive, easy to use, and easy to carry. Got a couple of tree straps, and I have uh, a couple of shiv blocks. And a shiv block allows you to double your winch line. Every time you uh, add a length of winch, you, uh, you double the strength. So if I run the winch cable out, to a shiv block mounted to a tree strap and back to the eight, to the side-by-side, uh, -side, a 4,000 winch now can pull 8,000 pounds. You can look all that stuff up on the internet. This is wire cable, and uh, I actually have this left over from my last rig. It had wire cable. This was my spare winch rope. Uh, I just have loops on the end of this now and it will act as an extension if I need to reach farther with my winch. Uh, there's some additional clips to uh, use on the metal thing. There's another shift block. So I carry two shift blocks, two tree straps, and then a variety of, of uh, clevises. And then a variety of clevises, a couple of smaller ones and a larger one. The XRC actually has one clevis on the front already. So that's my winch bag. It, I also carry a spare winch rope for my winch. This is a 75 foot poly rope, which is the same as what goes on the winch. And I could change that if I have to. Toe straps. I carry two heavy snatch straps, okay? This is, uh, these are both, I think, 30 feet, and uh, they have hooks and loops on them. So, uh, between these straps, the extra cables that I have, I can probably go 200 feet with cable uh, without too much trouble. And here's 
one of the most valuable things that I carry. This is a tow rope. This is inch and a quarter tow rope, 50 feet long. Looks like a big giant snake rolled up in here. Uh, that's good for, I believe, 40,000 pounds. And uh, uh, I carry that with me, and I have actually used that. Uh, we had uh, we met somebody in Colorado up in the high country. Uh, he had uh, broken the belt on his Polaris, and he didn't know anything about changing the belt or having a spare belt or anything, so we couldn't actually fix it up there. And I towed him almost 20 miles out of the back country into town uh, with this tow rope. That's across streams and, and everything. And boy, this, this is worth every penny. Probably $150 for that. At work. So, then I have a variety of bungee cords and little pieces of rope and stuff. Um, ratchet strap. That's a tablecloth to uh, set out on the ground if we want to sit on it or use it on a small table or something. And then I've got two or three waterproof bags here. If we, if we carry extra clothing, we can put those, put them in those bags and put the bags up on top here. And the last thing is a little grabber. see that or not. I have found that I have trouble dropping things and picking them up down in little spots inside the inside of the razor so I threw that in there so I'd have something to grab pick up a nut or a bolt that I've dropped. So I think that's everything that I carry. Uh, you guys are gonna think I'm nuts for carrying that much. Um, I like to think of myself as being prepared. Uh, I'm 73 years old. Uh, my wife is 71. And uh, we're not going to do well walking, especially in the high country in Colorado at 13,000 feet. It's all I can do to just stay alive and breathe. So, so uh, we try to carry as much stuff as we can uh, in the way of preparation. Something I normally have that I don't find, and maybe I took it out. I like to have about a half a quart of oil, motor oil. So I will have to get that and put that back in. But uh, other than that, I think that's, uh, that's everything that we carry in the way of prep gear for the backcountry when we're going by ourselves. Some of this stuff I wouldn't need uh, when we have friends that are going. But you'd be surprised the number of people that go and don't have anything. So I kind of leave all this stuff in the rig. It doesn't weigh that much. Uh, I've got a good storage space for it. And uh, I can get it in and out easily. So I just kind of have it there in case any of us ever need it. So hope this is useful to you. And I will catch up with you down the road or see you out on the trail.